the love tale, but the creation of the characters, the beautiful artwork, and the groundbreaking technology behind one of Disney's greatest classics. It also contains an even more significant story, the ideas and memories of the wonderful people at the heart of this magnificent motion picture. It's a story as old as storytelling, and yet still a vital part of today. Tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast. The story of Beauty and the Beast is an ancient one. It has been told again and again in countless cultures and every conceivable medium. It truly is a tale as old as time with roots in legends from Greece, India, Africa, France, and Italy. You can trace it back to Cupid and Psyche or the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Phantom of the Opera, Cyrano. But perhaps the best known literary version of the tale appeared in 1756, written by expatriate French aristocrat and educator, Madame Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont. In a way, it's one of the most sophisticated of the fairy tales that's ever been told. In most fairy tales, it's very clear from the beginning who the romantic couple is going to be. The characters see each other and it is love at first sight. In Beauty and the Beast, that's not what happens. And this is really a wonderful lesson. True beauty comes from within. True beauty comes from the, the spirit of the person. And it doesn't matter really what they look like. Fairy tales uh, talk to us in very elemental ways about uh, how to approach life and how to, uh, to look at life. And uh, I think that, that is a strong part of this uh, particular fairy tale as well. Well, after the success of Snow White, or even before, Walt Disney was looking for properties to develop into uh, feature-length films. And he looked at many, many stories, folk tales, fairy tales. One of the uh, projects that he always was really interested in, and consistently from the 1930s through the 50s, was Beauty and the Beast. But Beauty and the Beast proved a challenge to Disney's story team. So, although some work was attempted on the famous story in the 1930s and again in the 1950s, Walt returned Beauty and the Beast to the shelf, where it waited for rediscovery. In the late 1980s, Walt's nephew, Roy E. Disney, now executive vice president of the Walt Disney Company, had focused his attention on reinventing Disney animation for a new generation. Disney returned to fairy tale storytelling with Little Mermaid. And Little Mermaid was a huge success, and it really paved the way for the new development of Disney animated storytelling. The Little Mermaid proved that Disney animation could be both true to its legacy of quality and communicate to contemporary audiences. What would the next step be? One of the ideas that kept coming back was Beauty and the Beast, that classic French story. We knew it was the last of the Red Hot fairy tales. You know, we had done Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. We knew Walt had worked on it. We didn't know much about that, but we knew he'd sort of failed to solve it to his satisfaction. It's uh, always daunting when you hear a new title for the first time. And when somebody says, we'd like you to look into this, we'd like you to develop this idea. Uh, especially daunting when you know that Walt Disney and his artists tried to develop Beauty and the Beast and ended up saying, ah, oh, you know what, we'll never solve the second act. I also think that Disney had an enormous uh, challenge with that because to a lot of people, the French version of Beauty and the Beast that uh, Jean Cocteau made is just one of the great films ever made. In spite of some challenges and because of others, the Disney animation team decided to proceed with Beauty and the Beast as their next animated feature.